I think we should go ahead and get started um, since it is now 11. Thank you, Colby's clock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone for your patience. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We're not really sure what's going on with Zoom, but apparently there's some bugginess where we can't go live on Facebook right now. Um, yeah, so thanks for being here. And big thank you also to Matt, Antonius, and Colby for agreeing to chat with me today. Um, oh, the host just spotlighted my video. Okay, cool. Um, I wanted to get started by talking a little bit about the project in general for those of you who may not be as familiar with it. I'm going to screen share a little um, presentation that I have. Where is it? Ah. There it is. Okay. Lovely. So as you know, the project is called Installations. Um, we're super fortunate to be working with the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs and HAA on this, so big thank you to them. Um, it Installations is a citywide public art project with one project per city council district, so that means that there are 11 projects um, and the city council districts are given letters, so that's um, council districts A through K. Um, Originally, we had planned to unveil in the spring of this year, but that is going to be extended a little bit. Um, each project will be on view for approximately eight months, though, um, depending on the site. And all of the artists were selected by an advisory committee um, made up of incredible colleagues who work in the art world in Houston and are experts in the field of art and knowing incredible Houston artists. Um, this is our project team. Um, specifically, I would like to thank Kelly and Patrick over at Flying Carpet Creative for being incredible fabrication managers, and Chris Valdez with Laredo Street Projects, who's also working with Concept Kit on doing marketing for us. Um, we also have Jenny and Sarah uh, at Art League being incredible every day. Um, and then Debbie, Teresa, and Monique at the Mayor's Office giving us great support. Um, Art League Houston has core values of inclusive, inclusivity, creativity, and learning, um, and this project um, embraces those by trying to challenge notions of public art in critical but also playful ways, um, supporting local artists and projects that are reflective of the diverse communities in Houston, um, and then providing support for artists um, in a meaningful way. So. I also wanna go over the project goals really quickly because this will circle back later when we're discussing um, some bigger questions about um, the projects, these specific projects and then the entire initiative in general. Um, so some of our goals are to support local artists, challenge notions of public art, reimagine public spaces through stories of social justice and equity, um, respond to specific needs of communities in Houston, spread public art geographically through the city of Houston, engage and empower community members, and unearth, reinterpret, and or platform local histories. Um, so the list of the featured artists is here. Um, we have a lot of really incredible people working, um, but I wanna get to it so that we can start discussing. Um, this is a map of District F um, along with some information about the artists working there. So that's Antonius Timbui and Matt Manalo. Um, the title of the project is A Leaf Art House, which is actually a pre existing project started by Matt Manalo um, through, I think, Project Freeway with um, Diverse Works. Um, it's located at the A Leaf Spark Park and Nature Center, and that council member is Tiffany Thomas. Some cool things about F are it's home to Chinatown, A Leaf, Eldridge West Oaks, Midwest, Sharpstown, and West Chase neighborhoods, and 
um, the A Leaf Westwood Complete Community, which is a government initiative um, that has geographic boundaries. Um, the A Leaf Westwood Complete Community has 45% of residents that were born outside of the US, and 26% of them have a limited English speaking status, um, which means that they are not totally proficient in English and would probably prefer to speak another language. Uh, the other district we're going to be talking about today is District J, which actually sort of fits in with District F. Um, they share an east-west boundary. Um, that artist is Colby Deal. His project is called The Altarpiece. Um, it's located at the 59 underpass at Hillcroft with council member Edward Pollard. Um, home to Sharpstown, Brayburn, Gulfton, and then Midwest. Uh, neighborhoods in Westwood are shared by uh, F and J, and it also has the Mahatma Gandhi Business District, which some people may know as Little India. Um, it contains the Gulfton Complete Community, um, also very diverse, with over 50 languages spoken in a population of 40,000 residents. It is also the most densely populated area in Houston, which many people may not know. Um, so. Let's go ahead and turn it over to Matt and Antonius. Um, can y'all talk about your project for a little bit? Um, give us some background on that. Um, how you chose your site, or Antonius, I guess, how, how did you come to work with Matt? Um, Matt, can you give us background on A-Leaf Art House? Um, and then a little bit about what, what it is. Hi everyone, my name is Antonius Bowie. I am so, so honored to be one of the installation artists this year, and more specifically to be working with an incredible artist and organizer, Matt Manalo. So when approached for this project, I knew I wanted to be working with District F for many reasons. Like Sophie mentioned, I am very drawn as a child of two Vietnamese refugees, working with a predominantly immigrant, undocumented, and refugee population is really dear to my heart. And when I did site visits, I continuously went all around Chinatown and A-Leaf searching for a site to respond to. And when I took a step back and really thought about public art, knowing that this project would be on view for eight months, I really thought about the importance of sustaining public art. And that's when I found out about A-Leaf Art House and realized that Matt Manalo already started this phenomenal public art project that I could then use installations as a way to continue. And I think it's so important to provide a community a sustainable public art project that they can call their own. So our goal with a -Leaf Art House is to create an inclusive, intergenerational, and long-lasting public art project that will last after we go, I suppose. And Matt has been so, so, so gracious in terms of working collaboratively with me. We are so excited to bring a whole entire lineup of artists to A Leaf Art House. And I'll pass it on to Matt to talk more. Thanks, Antonius. Um, hi, I'm Matt Manalo. Uh, uh, a Leaf Art House uh, was born through my project Freeway with Diverse Works uh, last year. Um, I decided to do the A-Leaf Art House because, you know, because I'm a resident of A-Leaf and, and I am a full-time um, artist. And I felt like, you know, with all the culture that's happening in District F, I felt that art was missing in something that was uh, sustainable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and then uh, originally I, I, I wanted to just put uh, um, a shed, like a backyard shed. Uh, and then it was suggested to me that a shipping container would, would, would be a better choice. So we ended up using um, a part of my fellowship money to purchase the, the shipping container. And then um, also, you know, uh, International Management District has been very supportive as well. Um, when I approached them about the project, they were really excited because it was also one of the things that they wanted to start last year. 
So along with the art house, there were also a lot of art initiatives, initiatives that were started like murals um, and the painting of the International District Balls on Bel Air. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really honored to be working with Antonius, uh, who's been really great working with. Um, and also, you know, uh, to be part of this installations uh, and to be able to continue, uh, you know, what the, what the Earleaf Art House has started. Thanks, y'all. Um, so, like Antonia said and Matt said, A Leaf Art House is like a, um, it is a shipping container. Um, and in A Leaf, at the A Leaf Spark Park and Nature Center. Um, and so, I guess, Matt, can you talk about, like, or Matt and Antonius, can you talk about the kinds of programming or initiatives that you want to do through installations at A Leaf Art House? I think one thing that I was really inspired by Matt's vision was the flexibility of the space. So really thinking about how this 20 foot shipping container can be transformed to fit the needs of the community, whether or not it's through murals, exhibitions, workshops, concerts, poetry readings, et cetera. And I think more than ever, especially during the pandemic, we're really evaluating what our reality needs to look like. So I wanna read this small excerpt from a dear colleague, Leila Weeper, um, from an essay called Subject to Change. And it's talking about digital works during this time. It says, you can create, upload, delete, re-edit, and upload again as an abridged work. No pressure to notify the public or ask permission. The gallery, the theater, the museum is not live. The venue is now a link, a download, a digital document, and it is always subject to change. Um, I think Matt and I, as full-time artists, we're constantly struggling with how do we create the work, gather the funds, support our community. And so often we are responding to institutions or having to critique them. And I think one beautiful thing is working collaboratively to create a space where we can enact a reality that we really believe in. So paying artists is definitely at the forefront. Um, prioritizing artists who have roots with a leaf, artists of color, um, femme artists. And so really thinking about how can we constantly evaluate ourselves as organizers and create a better a leaf art house. Great, thank you so much. Um, I just put in the chat uh, some links. So one of the links is to our website, um, the installations website with uh, Antonius and Matt's page, and then to Matt's website, the sub page of A-Leaf Art House, and then to the A-Leaf Art House Facebook page. Um, please take a look at those uh, when you have a moment, because there's some really good photos of current and past stuff going on at the Art House, um, and you can learn a little bit more about it. Um, so maybe we can move on to Colby now. Um, Colby, can you tell us a little bit about your practice and your project? Um, let's see. So photography is probably like my go-to, my foundation as an artist. Uh, although I've looked into multimedia usage in the past couple of years, with sculpture and street art and we pasting as a process to get artwork to the community. Um, so just to kind of piggyback off what Antonius is saying about the institutions, uh, just to scrape on that, like, I, I, I kind of got tired of, you know, waiting, waiting for institutions or looking for the validation from institutions. And so, um, I just started taking my artwork to the streets, giving it straight back to the community instead of sending it through this vehicle of, you know, institutions or like their validation. You know, I wanted to give it right back to the people who gave me the opportunity and held space with me in order to create the pieces. And so I guess that's where a lot of my public art pieces came from. Um, 
me me using wood, incorporating wood to preserve them in order for them to survive outside within the elements for years and years to kind of resemble the community that I put them in. And they also changed and altered along with the community, but still stood strong as, you know, the houses and the community members and the buildings and the businesses that feed these community. And so that's where that kind of started and came from. And this piece kind of grew out, it grew out of that because of my love for Renaissance and classical paintings in the way that they were portrayed and, and presented to the people. They were presented huge, built with huge, beautiful wood frames. And so I just came up, not came up with the idea, well, basically came up with it, but it's been a, it's been a progression of thoughts and, and a progression of process throughout the years. And this, and I'm appreciative of HLA because they gave me the opportunity to expound upon this idea that's been festering in my head for so that's why it's called the altarpiece because it resembles the old paintings of like Leonardo da Vinci, Caravaggio, and uh, you know you go on and on Van Eyck. Um, I wanted to portray photographs in it, man. so that's why I chose to create it with the vision of you know the resemblance of an altarpiece and to resemble it to make it look like a home, the home of the home that. Uh, basically is in these communities. It, it looks like the cookie, I won't say cookie cutter, but it, it just has the, the design of homes and gives you that, that memory of where a lot of these community members come from and where I come from. Um, and yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a diverse piece. It has multiple different, you know, ethnicities, and shades and colors of human beings that I think people will learn to, and come to appreciate once they are repeatedly driving by under the freeway. I think it's a nice hidden gem that'll be presented. And so yeah, that's basically just the, you know, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Colby, um, I'm gonna, screen share in a second um, an image from your proposal documents, if that's okay, yeah, um, sure. so that people get an idea of what it will look like. Um, so like I said, this is in the under the Hillcroft underpass under 59, um, I guess 69, but I don't really know anybody that. Yeah, they changed it up so much. Um, okay, so this is uh, what it will look like, um, or the, the idea of what it's gonna look like. Um, so that gray on the bottom that you see with the kind of perpendicular lines, that's the sidewalk. Um, and then this is going to be sort of larger than life, right Colby? Yeah, that'll be flush against the back wall of the, of mm -hmm. the U-turn underpass. So you'll have, you'll have a, a good amount of space between the sidewalk. This is just a diagram just to show it. it'll be placed on the ground, but it'll be about 70, 75 to 100 feet from the piece to the actual street that, that, that curves under the freeway. Um, we've, we've had to do little alterations to the top because of how, how tall I made it and where the freeway kind of comes out at the top. So we might not be able to do the, the pediments, but we'll, I think we're going to, me and Kelly and Patrick are going to uh, get together and see how we can alter that. But for the most part, it's, that's exactly how it's going to look. Oh, thanks. I like it. I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to look incredible. Um, and one thing I really, I think is really incredible about your project, Colby, is that um, it has these really sort of classical references to it. Um, but at the same time is references enough of what we're familiar with in terms of like home architecture and then photos of people that look more like us than a Renaissance painting. Right. Um, right. So it has this like really beautiful dignity about it um, with still this, this familiarity. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, exactly. And that was one of the ideas uh, of connecting that 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 road is the the idea of when people were painted back back then and um, and put into artwork, they were usually really rich, you know, or some type of political figure, someone of importance that could afford those types of of, of pieces of artwork and that type of notoriety. And I feel like this is the exact opposite of um, giving people who are doing things and making moves in, within their communities and being, becoming pillars, getting getting the, the proper notoriety for their work, for their blood, sweat, and tears, you know? And I, that was basically the gist of why I wanted to do that. You know, that's, and that's why I photograph and portray these people in public in a monumental way, you know, to give them that significance and importance. Yeah. I think this segues really nicely into um, our sort of what we had discussed uh, internally as what we would like to talk about in terms of a kind of broader discussion. Um, and that was sort of a mix of things. So talking about, it, we, we were thinking about this when we were designing the project as well, but also with each individual artist in terms of conceiving of public art. Like what is it that public art can do and what makes, what, what about public art sets it apart in terms of the ways that it can operate um, in, in our society, right? So what opportunities does public, public art present that we can use to make a really special project? Um, and then also kind of mixing with that is Antonius and Matt were wanting to talk about sort of like community, uh, community care so how is it that art, public art can care for a community um, and help imagine futures? So um, Antonius and Matt, can you expand on that idea a little bit and then maybe we can have more discussion? You wanna go first, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> sure, um, I, I believe that public art um, has that responsibility almost. Um, that it also not only be visually appealing, but it also has to engage with the community where it is standing. Um, and uh, I mean, that was one of the goals of the art house uh, is not only to be something, you know, like a sight to see whenever you pass by or something like that, but it also has to speak or engage the community in a way where um, it not only influences, you know, like the next generation to see art in a different light or, or it educates the people about art, you know, especially in Alif where it's um, mostly working class. Um, and, and also, you know, like, um, it's not just a sculpture that just is there and just taking up space. I, I wanted to have something that um, also works with the community and, um, you know, and engages with the systems that already exist there, um, you know, uh, and also collaborating with, with other people who have already been there and who have already been doing stuff you know, in a way, also honoring the history of the place um, and and the people. Yeah, definitely everything Matt said. And I think when I, like, broadly talking about public art, um, when I was approached for this project, I remember being so, really thinking about public art, the fact that this category exists already says that most art is not publicly accessible. And I love that Matt brought up the working class population of Aleve. And for instance, growing up, most of my family members have never been to a museum or gallery. And the idea of art feels so foreign and inaccessible. And so it was so important for us to create Aleve Art House, one that is 
like I said, flexible and allows us to care for the community according to the situations. For instance, this fall, uh, we decided to redistribute the funds to provide a group exhibition for artists affected by the economic fallout of COVID-19. Um, we wish we could have done more, but we were able to provide 10, $250 stipends for artists around the Houston area. So thinking about how do we care for A-Leaf, but also artists all around Houston and expand A-Leaf's reputation and allow other people to come into A-Leaf and enjoy all the art and culture that we produce that may not be considered art by other people. So it's so important for us to be taking care of not only A-Leaf, but everyone who makes A-Leaf possible. And that is the wider Houston population. Colby, can you talk about the ways that your project also addresses these things? Because I think it really does. Um, and if you've thought of, at all about your project in, in these sorts of terms. Mm -hmm. um, so when you spoke about like, um, affecting the future, uh, I feel in this age of imagery and information, you know, leading the forefront you know, of basically altering humanity, you know, and because, you know, we see it with uh, commercials, we see it with billboards, we see it with all the, just the huge mass amounts of information that's thrown upon us every day. Why do you think a commercial, for to get a commercial spot, they pay millions and millions of dollars? Because just you see in that 30 seconds of a product, people lose their minds and they go crazy and they go buy the product, and, you know? And so I just kind of flipped that idea of like, well, why don't I think like a commercial or think like a business and use my gift or talents or whatever you say as into also the way people in, in these undersourced communities think about themselves because they're so, they're so, often perpetuated in a negative light. And they're always having a finger waved at them, you know, because of stereotypes and things that are, you know, rivered throughout society. And so I was, I just had the idea to just to put a positive image of a, a, a kid riding his bike right next to where he lives on the corner store. Like imagine how that kid feels about himself or his, his change his mode of thought has changed just by waking up unknowingly in the morning to get on the school bus and receive himself, you know, as he would see a, a, like a, a white man or you know, a white lady on like this billboard to like be a senator or something, you know what I mean? Or, you know, to be a city council member. I, I just applied those same aspects to, to the work. And when I go, when I return back to the community year, a year or two later to see, just like the piece on the Eldorado Ballroom, you know, of, of my mom in that frame, just the, just the idea and the, the conversations that I was having with people and what they were saying, how they felt, driving down Elgin every day to see that piece and how their daughters would say, hey, I want to dress like that, you know, or who is that woman? Just for them to seek information is enough for me. And then also, if you, yeah, placement is very important. Um, I, I put a couple pieces on the, on the back or the sides of small businesses, you know, that um, contribute to the sustainability of their award, you know. And just the, the traffic that was created from people posting the photos on Instagram, on Facebook, you know, then it creates this curiosity and people want to come see. Then in turn that they sit down and have a cup of coffee. They have a, they they eat a sandwich or, you know, they, they they spend money and that contributes to, you know, the environment that these people grow up in. And and I, I just started to to realize that and how powerful that was. Um I know I'm pretty sure everybody's been in Doshi House. Here we go. Um Everybody's been in Doshi House, it started there and people started posting and then, like I said, people just go sit down and have a sandwich, you know, contribute to the funds and then they would, because of the artwork, 
because of what was, was, was put there, you know, and I think that plays a, a really big part in, in the, the, the survival of a community. I, that's how I look at one, at least one aspect of, of public artwork. And uh, I like building bridges. I feel I kind of consider myself as a bridge artist, like building a bridge of awareness and understanding, you know, so. My two cents about that. Awesome. Um, we do have a question for you, uh, Colby from Mariah Rockefeller saying, do you see this project or a thread from this piece taken to other communities in the future that you either study or work with for a time? The exact piece do you think you mean or just, um, yeah, I, I plan to do this everywhere 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 i can put my foot i'm, I'm going to do it you know and if i and if i have to continue going gorilla to get it started that's what i'll do you know um, yeah definitely and if even if i and i'm and i built it and i will build it you know when i complete it i'll i build it to where it can be broken down and moved so yeah definitely even if even if, even if um I would like to let it survive in public before anyone even considers asking me to like put it up in a, a, a gallery space or like a museum. I would like for the public to appreciate it, you know, for people alike that look alike from the piece to be able to feel good about themselves as they go by it. But definitely, you know. Hey, we went, we, and we took not the exact idea, but a, a portion of the idea and put it in first world, and put it in the park, in Richard Brock Park. You know, uh, one of the first black lawmakers in Houston, Texas. Uh, he started one of the, the first uh, black schools for children. You know, and so, yeah, uh, yeah, I definitely see it moving around. I, I, before COVID came, I had a piece in the works in Denver and I was gonna do the same thing, not the same exact piece, but same idea, different different images, but same idea, different. Yeah, um, I think I'm thinking right now about how often uh, we're hearing the phrase "representation matters." I think that that kind of doc that kind of discussion nationally has captivated a lot of people's attention, um, and sort of connecting Colby's project with Matt and Antonius's project in terms of. Um, also thinking of the phrase like you can't be what you can't see. Um, being able to see yourself portrayed kind of like monumentally um, in photography or someone that looks like you, right? Or a business that you frequent all of a sudden has art on it um, that's like really beautiful and incredible. And you didn't think that this building that you frequented would ever be sort of like worthy of this, this commodity that like Antonia said is often often private, right, and dependent on, on money. Um, right. And then Antonius and Matt, your project, bringing these sorts of resources into a community and saying like, just by virtue of you existing, you deserve access to this. Um, and like here you can work with artists that look like you and you can also, you don't have to be an artist, but you can also be invested in the arts in a way that's meaningful to you. Um, so, First of all, congratulations to all three of you on putting together such meaningful and beautiful projects. Um, but I don't know if you have anything else you want to say about about that. Uh, I, th I think it's great that, um, you know, um, that we're highlighting these projects uh, right now, uh, especially in these times. Um, and, and what you were saying about representation, you know, um, there's a lot of people who have already approached um, me, you know, even when I'm just working at the art house and they have no idea of what that shipping container is doing in there. And, you know, and it's always been an honor trying to explain it. And, and you just see their faces just light up and, and, and knowing that 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 brings joy to them is is already like a good feeling and, and you know kind of like an assurance that that you know that you're doing a good thing for the community 
I like the idea that y'all use a, use a shipping container because usually I've been seeing shipping containers being purposed, repurposed as the infrastructure of home. They uh, have y'all ever seen that? Where, where they use, where, where, where they chop up the, the, the shipping yeah. containers and yeah. homes out of them. But at the same time, they make, they take a cheap, the developers take a cheap product and make a home out of it and make it super expensive. And in these in, in third war and these type of communities. Yeah. I'm like, dude, what what was the purpose of it's like it's like a slap in the face. It's like you go you go buy some cheap material, which is pretty good, and then you charge a like a, like an arm and a leg for it for the people for people that aren't even from that community and to where people can't even live in it from that community. Same thing with gentrification, but it, it was I just like the idea that you chose that that shipping container. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, also with the idea of being sustainable, because like in my personal art practice, um, I also do, you know, reuse and recycle and, and repurpose a lot of things. So I thought that, you know, that would fit like using a shipping container rather than something that was store bought or something that was brand new. Um, I felt like it spoke to me better. Um, and also, you know, like with the idea of, of having um, like the supply and demand of things. And, and I love that you brought up the, the idea of, you know, shipping containers being used for houses or new houses and gentrification and all that. And having a shipping container in Aleph is almost like, a, like not really a sore eye because you see them a lot. So... <laughs> So having that, um, it kind of fits in already and it's not going to like, it doesn't stand out to a point where, you know, it's not like a $5 million mansion in the middle of a, of, of, of a, an open field. Right, right, right. So. Yeah, I can definitely see that growing, you know, because that's exactly what they do. They take them and they just stack them and they cut mm -hmm. holes in the walls and you can walk all through them. So maybe this could be something that you can yeah it's a whole building <laughs> like, so what you're seeing is actually the first mural that we did um and then uh sophie if you could switch to the new mural uh by thomas tran who's also an a leaf artist um so yeah that is a new mural at the at the art house so will y'all be giving multiple artists like different segments of time to have a mural on the on the art house? Oh, that's nice. that's idea. You want to talk about our programming, Antonius? Yeah, hopefully we'll figure out how to meet physically once, um, yeah, post pandemic life. <laughs> but for now, we will be documenting the exhibitions and posting them online, similar to most museums, galleries, et cetera. But every single month from now until February, we actually have a new artist within the space. And the mural will switch once more by artist duo, who is also A Leaf based. Uh, we have Thomas Tran, drag queen Kumquat. We have uh, An Bui, who just moved back from the Bay Area, Kendrick Gilbert, the COVID-19 artist, and just an entire array of artists and trying to expand this definition as well. So it would be great to bring more drag artists, sex workers, organizers into a space, um, people who may not be easily recognized by larger art institutions. Absolutely. Um, we're going to have to wrap up kind of soon. Does anybody have any last minute questions that they would like to put in the chat for these artists? Um, if so, now is the moment to do it. But um, I just wanted to let that, let everybody know that we should probably wrap up fairly soon. Um, Antonius, I think that that's um, a really good point. So uh, everyone, not only will these projects be developing over the next few months, but um, all 11 will be. So 
if you are interested in these projects or you're interested in the um, uh, initiative as a whole, our website is installations.com. Um, that's installations with the L's being ones. Um, you can find out more information on Facebook, Art Leaks Facebook, um, and on the individual artists' websites and Facebook pages. Um, we will absolutely be updating you as things happen. Um, any final thoughts from anybody? I like, I like the things I'm seeing. It's cool. Right? It's, it's cool for, that people can understand that, you know. Um, also, when I get it up, let's treat it like an altar piece, like a real, it's like go give, like go give it like donations, like candles and flowers and gifts and stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I think that would, that would be an awesome idea. Like that just came to my head, like let's just fill it up, you know. Like, <laughs> I cool. love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do flowers and everything. Yeah, I, I live close by there. So yeah, I, I want to see it in person. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And we can um, document it filling with lovely offerings. Right, right, exactly. You know, just I, I, again, that, that, that culture that's past, that, that comes from the past, because we still do that today. You know? mm -hmm. Why not do it for people who are alive? And still yes. here and, you know doing it so yeah let's do it well um thank you so much everyone um art league will be posting more information about future zoom roundtables that we're going to have um should be really cool. I look forward to more conversations like this. And again, thank you so much to Matt, Antonius, and Colby for joining us today. Please keep your eye on our social media um, and our website to keep up with their projects. Thanks, everyone. Thanks thank so much for joining. Be safe. Yes, be safe. <laughs> Bye, y'all.